Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good. So glad everybody could make it. So glad everybody could make it. We pushed through, we pushed through. Hey, to those who overcome, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, because if, if I don't make it to Sunday school, we got problems. Yeah, you're right about that. We got really big problems. Um, surprise, we're having Sunday school in our pajamas. <laughs> they just dragged me out by my feet. Um, does anybody have any prayer requests or praise reports? Well, from last week, I got healed when Jason prayed for me. Oh, a healing. Yeah, I Jesus healed healing. you last week. Yeah, last healed your back? Yeah. or? Yeah, that whole shoulder area. Yeah. Thank you. So you've had no more problems with it? No. So God answers prayers. Yes. Okay, so my question is this, because I, I was talking with some, someone earlier. So I had gone to the chiropractor. So you went to the chiropractor. I had rub it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Tina had to rub. <laughs> and, so, and so now you're not having to rub. No. Was that the first time you prayed for it? Last Sunday. Was that the first time you got prayer? Uh, yes. Yes. No. I, so no. I, I was going to say, I no, thought. second time. You prayed twice. Today. Okay, so we, we have not because we ask not. So just because you, you pray and, and ask God for something and you don't get it, I, if it, if it is his will and you, you ask, you're gonna, he's going to answer that prayer. But if you ask and he doesn't immediately answer or give you your request, I'm not talking about like a, I'm not talking about a million dollars or a nice new car or anything. I'm, I'm talking about. A need you know you got physical needs or whatever you ask and you don't get it from the Lord should you just well he's not going to answer my prayers I'm going on about there ain't no use in praying anymore no you get prayer you pray if if, if it's on your heart and if you're struggling with it sometimes we have to overcome Jason said that a while ago you know about <laughs> making it to Sunday school you have to overcome so um, anyway we got all kind of good testimonies and stories about that so a healing any other praise reports did anybody, yeah? I had a request for a friend that works white. Uh, uh, a I, I prayer. My book. Oh, you finished your book. Congratulations. Yeah, I sent it to the uh, publisher, so now I don't know what the next step is. But I think they may have to just uh, put up, make, you know, accept all the changes and tweak it, and then it could probably go over to printing. Okay, very good. Uh, we have a prayer request. Um, it is a... Um, <laughs> A friend's spouse is um, struggling um, and uh, prescribed, prescribed medications causing all kind of mental issues physical and physical issues, issues um, and struggling really, really bad. And so um, we just want to lift this person up um, in prayer. We'll uh, Miss Terrific. Uh, uh, Terrific. Okay, okay. Miss okay. Terrific. Um, Miss, so we're, we will be praying for Miss Terrific. Um, that's a good, that's a good, um, yes. So I was headed in the direction of getting sick. <laughs> okay. Different symptoms, you know. Okay. Um, still feel, you know, I'll get more prayer today, but still fight, but it's fighting. I'm fighting it. So. Okay. Yes. And it's, okay. I'm winning. You're winning. winning. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. She's winning, fighting. You know, you know what though? I think because of all the COVID stuff, it's got everybody on such high alert when they start having a little sore throat or scratchiness or a uh, cough or whatever. And there is stuff going around, but how many, I mean, like how many times in your entire life have you had viruses or colds or bugs that put you down for two or three days, sometimes even a week. That's and it's two or three times a year. You know, I, I, I mean, like up until probably about four years ago, definitely me, and then most of the time Brandon, we would be getting sick around Christmas time. You know, sometime in late November, December to January, we, we were going, and it wasn't just a light sickness, but we come against that because... That's right. We, we uh, came against it because we knew it was it, it was every year. I mean, that that's a spiritual attack. Um, but we're, we're so heightened right now um, that we open ourselves up to fear. And when, when fear jumps on you, you go get sick. Uh, Jason said it the other day when he was having a discussion with somebody I overheard. <laughs> so I'm listening into conversation. But anyway, he said, the thing you fear the most 
is what's going to get you. Yeah. So Sometimes uh, it's not fear, especially when everybody around you is testing positive. <laughs> <laughs> And it's very contagious. Uh, Jason, who was that? Who was that uh, God's general that went and did missionary work with with typhoid? John G. Lake. John G. Lake. Yeah, yeah, with like what, was that typhoid? No, it was the plague. The yeah. bubonic plague or something? Well, I don't know if it was bubonic. It wasn't the black plague. It was. They, they, was, they, was, they, they put it on his skin. He was doing God's work. When yeah. you're about God's business, He will protect you. Period. He has to. I, I mean, like if you're doing His work. And, and, and you're dedicated and you've given your life to him, he's going to protect you. And if you happen to get sick, he will heal you. And if you don't get healed, and, and all those sounds like backdoor excuses, you know, uh, people can say that. And it's not. It's you have the peace that passes all understanding. That, that, that is what we, our, our, our belief system stands on. That's, that is what God is all about. So anyway. Um, it just doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't feel good, but you know what? You come out with a testimony. I mean, like, your testimony is, you know, um, I know for, um, and I'm not promoting this to anybody, you do what, what's right, but I know when you got sick um, back at the last summer, I believe it was, y'all both got sick, but I remember you said that, you know, you were miserable. You're like, I, I can't really catch my breath, and... My advice was, you know, you know, you know when you've had enough, and it's between you and the Holy Spirit. You go to the doctor when you've had enough, but otherwise you keep claiming it. He will heal me. He will. You pray. You come against the enemy's plan to of to, to destroy you, um, and you 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 fought through it. Yeah, we didn't go to the doctor. Yes, and and God healed you, <laughs> but He sustained you. That's why I, I was having a discussion uh, the other day about um, Jason's teeth. You know, he did go to the doctor about his teeth, but there was pain leading up to getting to the, oh, yeah. the dentist, not the doctor, but the dentist. <coughs> and so, um, pain. Like so it was it was really really bad pain, but you know he. What he would do would be on the phone. He'd be on his way home from work, and he would, Paige, i got to get off the phone. It's hurting really bad. I said, okay. And so I'm hanging up praying for him. He's, he just starts praying and talking to the Lord, and the pain subsides. And it doesn't mean the pain didn't come back the next day, or like, but every time it come back, you know, you can throw in the towel. God didn't answer my prayer. God didn't grow my teeth. God didn't miraculously heal me overnight. Right. But uh, it's standing on what his promises say. I mean, without faith, we can't please God. So anyway, I didn't mean to get on all this stuff. But anyway, it's, God, God is good. God is good. We also want to lift up the Elliott family. They are due to leave the 10th of February um, to head to Nepal. So um, everything is looking good for them and exciting. So lift them up that God continues to put them in the path with the Nepalian people that they can minister to and um, their unreached group of people. Awesome. So, okay, so we are working through a book called Spiritual House Cleaning by um, Eddie and Alice Smith. It has been an awesome, awesome read. Um, and today I'm just going to kind of hit and miss on Chapter 8, Children and Spiritual House Cleaning. So you may not have children. You may have children. You may have young children. You may have grown-up children. If you don't have children, have you been a child? Okay, no. <laughs> you were born full grown. <laughs> I said I'm still a child. <laughs> You're still a child. Okay, very good. Uh, well, but, but the, the thing about it is, you, you may think that, okay, my children are all grown and they, I've got grandchildren, or, you know, I've never had children, or I'm still a child living under my parents' house. You know, um, you've got friends, you've got family members that have children, and you've got people that God will bring, if not already, into your path, that he will bring down the road into your path. So um, don't think, oh, this has nothing to do with me, because it does. Um, uh, by now, you've noticed that children often, oh, hold on just a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself this morning. I know. I didn't, I didn't pray. <laughs> Would you like to open us up in prayer? No, I'm going to pray a little bit. Okay. I want, I want hogging. Okay. Let's make him do it. Uh, <laughs> You're making his eyes get really big. All right, I'm going to open us up in prayer. Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the rain. I'm so excited to see what springs forth to life um, in spring, and I know that the rain is preparing all that now, and I'm excited, and it's washing away. Um, it's washing 
it's junk away that needs to be washed away and uh, thank you for that we just we thank you for this day we thank you for all those that have come to worship you today lord to hear something from you to, to receive something from you lord help us to to be receptive and we bind any spirits that would hinder any anything that you have for us lord help us to go about when we leave here today as we um, go back to our homes and to our families lord help us to uh, always acknowledge you and realize um, your will for our life, Lord, and help us to, to clean our homes, our, our, our physical temples as well, our, our, our bodies, as well as our homes. Help us to see areas that Satan is trying to get a strong foothold in, our, in the door into our lives. And Lord, close it. We ask in Jesus' name for this. We lift up all the uh, prayer requests that have been mentioned. And Lord, we thank you for all the praise reports that has been mentioned today. We just, we love you. We ask you to close our mouths when it needs to be closed, open it when it needs to be open, and just use us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sorry, I was getting all excited. Okay, by now you've noticed that children often experience the effects of spiritual pollution more tangibly than adults do. Why do y'all think that is? Say that again. Why do children experience spiritual, um, I, I would say, experiences, uh, effects um, of spiritual pollution easier than adults? Or that, that seems to be more um, obvious with, with children. Why does anybody think that? Pollution. What do you mean by like pollution? spiritual pollution. So like things that you bring into your house. Or, um, things that corrupt. Things that corrupt your walk. Good. I think the spiritual head, if they're not under the authority of Christ, it's going to affect the entire family. It's going to affect how the household is run and how, you know, people be, I don't know. I just, I mean, the child is more vulnerable. They don't, they can't understand, you know. Like, I, I have a um, sibling, and this person's got some stuff in their house. I ain't going to say what it is, but one time they said, this house is haunted or something. Somebody lived in it before, and yeah. I don't know. It could be. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I, I think the devil's just a coward, and children are innocent, so yeah. he's going to attack them however he can. Low yes. Low-hanging fruit, all right? Low-hanging fruit. Ooh. Less experience. Less experience. Very good. Thank you. Very That's good. I'm sitting back here thinking, oh, Very good. Low, <laughs> less experience. You know what I mean? They haven't gotten counts to it. naive. Naive, very good. Hadn't got callous to it. Um, he wants he wants the younger generation. I mean, it's, it's kind of like has anybody ever battled with you know you're battling with some demonic oppression and spirits, and you feel like you get victory over it. You know, you pray, you take it, you, you do the things you're supposed to do, and then you notice one of your children or one of your siblings or your parents. I mean, like that seems to be, um, and it goes both ways because um, I have seen where a mother struggles with depression and, and Jezebel, you know, and some of, some of these, yeah. these spirits. And then next thing you know, she's doing better and then the daughter all, all of a sudden, a grown daughter, is she starting to struggle with the stuff and the mother's acting better. And the next thing you know, the, the daughter's acting better and then the mother's, that spirit goes both ways. And then the daughter, not the daughter, but the dog needs antidepressants. Don't there you go. Uh, well, it, it goes, it goes, it can go to your pets as well. Yeah. But anyway, um, so. Um, so how much is that, the demon passing and then generational curses? It could be both. Yeah. It could be both. Um, I know when we take people through deliverance, we break any ungodly soul ties. You, there there's you go. godly soul ties and then there's ungodly soul ties. A godly soul tie is a soul tie that God has ordained. It's something a husband and wife would have a godly soul tie. Um, family members, friends, you can have godly soul ties with them and ungodly. An ungodly soul tie is when it's something that, that is a person that God has not put in your path, uh, someone you've sinned with in the past. Um, and so what we do is, in the name of Jesus, we break all ungodly soul ties. And then once the soul ties are broke, then you cast out the demons. The thing with soul ties, so say um, you have had um, a, a friendship with someone and you've got an ungodly soul tie and you've committed sin, whatever kind of sin it was. Uh, let, let's go. We'll, we'll be pretty um, explicit. Uh, say it's a partner. 
And so you fornicated with this partner. Well, there is a ungodly soul tie. Whatever demons that person has, those demons have legal access to you because you have just joined um, and in sin. Um, you, and it, it, it is not just that sin. It can be any sin. That is a, a stronger tie, though. And if I'm speaking out, you disagree, you know, uh, I mean, like, you can go and, and rob a bank with somebody and, you know, you, you planned it, you, you've, you've pat piled around them, um, and you've got a, a strong soul tie, an ungodly soul tie there as well. Um, but anyway... So for children, the, the thing with children is Satan wants the younger generation because if he can get the younger generation, then he's got access to the ones coming up behind them. Mm -hmm. So he's fighting hard to get them. I mean, he's mm -hmm. fighting hard. Mm -hmm. um, I had my, my grandfather was a very humble and meek and good godly man. Mm -hmm. And when he died, I was talking to my mother about this here a while back. He died in 2001. And uh, so it's been a long time ago. But I remember when he died, that was a prayer warrior on behalf of our family. Amen. We lost a huge, huge intercessor prayer warrior that would battle. I, I know he went to spiritual battle. Um, and he didn't, you know, some people battle and you can see it. Some people battle and you can feel it. Well, the ones you see, you can feel too. But um, some people are, are more, uh, I don't want to say vocal, but an animated is not the right word, but you can see. I mean, like they're, you, you can, they're out there walking around praying and stuff. You see it. Mm -hmm. And then there are those quiet prayer warriors. And when you lose the older generation, that is, that is what we are. You know, I mean, like, and, and even though you're young, you are an older generation. There's younger ones coming up behind you. Our prayers, you don't know that how much praying on behalf of your, of your family and your friends and your community, you don't know how much of an effect that has mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm. So just because you don't see it, because you don't feel it, it's by faith. The Word of God says that you cannot please God without faith. So by faith, I know that when I pray, God is hearing that prayer. He's honoring that prayer, and He will answer that prayer. We have, un we have lost family members that, you know, we, uh, we've prayed for years for. Now, I don't pray every day for them. I think Jason talked about this last Sunday. If God puts it on your heart to be praying for them, if you're an intercessor that that's what you do, but I don't pray for them every day because I've prayed and I've had a conversation with God and, you know, my prayer, Lord, before they take their last breath, get them saved. You know, preferably I would like for them to get saved before the end so that they can be a mighty war warrior and worker for you. Um, and that's not out of selfishness. I think that's a prayer that God's going to honor. So it's, um, are we praying prayers when he doesn't answer our prayers? Are we praying prayers for us or are we praying prayers for him? I mean, you can have a, a, a loved one that's dying, um, laying in the bed dying, and you, God heal him, heal him, heal him, and he doesn't heal him. But it, but you don't know that in his infinite wisdom that he's got plans if they were to stay, maybe they would go to hell. Maybe they would, uh, mm -hmm. something would happen. Maybe by them dying, somebody else gets saved and doesn't have to spend eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. And you're suffering because you're miserable because they had to leave early. Mm -hmm. But is it worth it? I mean, like, what is the greatest commandment in the Bible? Love God with all your heart, all your strength, all your soul, and all your might. So if we love him, we trust him, and we want his will, not our will. Amen. So if you got a loved one that's dying, I mean, if you've got family members that are living for Satan and, and, and living for the world and stuff, if what they are going through to get them, if what they're experiencing, the trials and troubles of this world, and we're trying to stop that, and that's what God needs to get them so that they can um, secure their, their salvation, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it worth them being a paraplegic the rest of their life? Is it worth, 
you know, uh, them being, you know, whatever trauma they go through. I mean, I, I, I you know, you think of the most hor horrific thing that you would not want your family member or your child or your parent to suffer. If it's for their eternal soul to be saved, is it worth it? And it is. Yeah. I had a friend one time and um, uh, she had a, a, her husband was an alcoholic and she told me one time that she prayed for the destruction of his flesh. And I was like, how can you pray for that? I mean, she's like, well, that's what it says. And she showed me the scripture in the Bible where it's talking about the destruction of the flesh. And, you know, and that I cannot, I mean, like that was, I admire that because like their flesh, their physical form being here was not as important to her as the eternal salvation. Yeah. And that's how we should be about about everybody. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just real quickly, when we had my son's memorial, um, you know, obviously most of the people that came were the young people, and there were several people that got, several of the young people got saved there because he had an altar call. You know, the person that, the uh, pastor that gave his service had an altar call, and he didn't make them come up, but I saw several hands go up, Yeah. and, there, and then they said the sinner's prayer, um, so... How about that? Yeah. How about that? So, did that not give you like peace? I mean, like even I mean, didn't do away with your your suffering, but I mean, like it, it's just you know God's using the situation. Right. God used the situation. What happened to your friend's husband about alcoholic? What happened? He is not an alcoholic anymore. Amen. He is not. Thank you. That is a very, very good well, question. Man, she prayed. I'll tell you something. It was not an easy. It was not an easy thing. And his flesh was getting destroyed. Not. Um, it was like car wrecks that were really could have been really. I mean, like had several different things happening. And um, God was. Uh, he, he. God got him. God got his attention. And um, you know, it is exciting. Thank you for asking that question because well, that no, that's a, I, changes the story, I, don't it? Well, I know I read a story about how when the Christians found out Stalin was going after the Jews and going to kill them and destroy them, I think even Derek Prince said, as he and a ton of Christians started banding together and prayed and fasted for um, the demonic spirit of Joseph Stalin to be delivered up the justice, the cripple and bind and deliver up the justice, and that's when I think he died of a, a brain hemorrhage not too long after that or something. That's what I was wondering. What what happened to him? Right, know? right. Well, um, yeah. I, well, I appreciate you asking that because um, it changes the whole story. <laughs> you know, for for, <laughs> for all y'all listening. Okay. Um, so let's see here. This is a, a good chapter. They they go into a lot of details as far as how you handle um, battle and and spiritual things with toddlers, for small children. Uh, teenagers and older teenagers to pre uh, pre um, pre adults or young adults. Um, so I'm not going to go through all that, um, but it this is, it, it is good reference um, to read. Um, so the battle for our children, the spiritual battle is being waged for the souls of your children. Um, the book talks about two battle. Um, Two, from two standpoints, the media and our homes. So you think about media. Um, and, you know, we, we can even think about some of the, the news, the, the stuff that's going on now. You think about smaller children and even even uh, teenagers and stuff that, that's hearing this stuff. What is it? What is all this when you watch the news and, you, and you're talking about all this stuff that's going on in the government and all? What is this putting into them? And there, there's a fine line. They need to, they need to know, uh, and depending on the age and how God leads you, they need to know. But at the same time, is it loading them up with fear? Is it loading, I mean, what is, what is being poured into them? And um, talking about fear, there was um, a deliverance one time where a spirit of fear came up and asked, what do you do? You know, I'm fear and I control the world. And fear does. Um, you you watch the way some people behave and the ugliness of some people, mm -hmm. and it, it's the root of it is fear. When they lash out, when they act um, irrational, and when they make decisions like, "What on earth were you thinking?" Th they're so fearful. And the Bible says, "Fear is not of the Lord." Okay, amen. So if you're struggling with fear, well, first of all, where's it coming from? Second of all, get it out. 
And Jason will put the number up on the line, but, you know, we believe in deliverance. That's what the ministry that God has given us is deliverance ministry. So if you're struggling with fear, God can set you free from that. You don't have to live under that bondage. Um, the other is, uh, the media and then our homes. What are we allowing in our homes? What are we bringing in our homes? Um, when you, when there are younger people in your home, your children, um, or maybe you are one of the, the siblings or whatever, Things that you bring in, if you're, and if you are the, the teenager or the young adult, what are you bringing in the home? I mean, and even when you start your own home, what, what are you allowing in? What are you allowing in through the TV, through posters, through movies? Um, if you start having problems, if you start feeling depressed, if you, um, I had a discussion the other day uh, with someone that was struggling with just feeling kind of heaviness, and, and um, let's start looking at what are you listening to? What are you watching? What's different? Um, because these are open doors that we don't even realize as we're, you know, what, mu if you start feeling like, and you know, you listen to, and this was the discussion that took place, when you listen to a song, and, you know, oh, I like this type of music. This sounds good. You're not going to immediately have the Spirit get on you and manifest. It, it comes in because you've, you've listened. You keep putting it, putting it in, putting it in. Music is like a mantra. You know, you're hearing the same thing over and over again. And so if it's depressing music, if it's uh, um, sexual, I was trying to think of the word. If it's sexual music, you know, uh, different different spirits seem to hone in on different people. And whichever one's uh, um, more inclined to you, that's the one that's going to kind of grab you. And the more you listen to that, uh, maybe it's drugs or is it sex, drugs, and rock and roll. What, anyway, whatever the spirit is, that you, you hear that enough. And then the next thing you know, it might be you've been listening to it two or three weeks before you notice it. So then you've been listening to it so long, so it doesn't seem like a oh I listen to this I start noticing I feel it this way you don't notice it it's gradual it's slow the enemy is patient that's what this chapter talks about um, he's very patient he will just kind of sit back bide his time and and grab you when you're at a weak moment so that he can destroy your testimony cause you to turn away curse God whatever you know get you to the point where you don't care you don't care about fighting um, so uh, Pay attention to what you're bringing in your home and your your temple. We are the temple. Um, let's see. It, some of the music and the media and stuff. Friends tempt them to encourage in sexual promiscuity at earlier and earlier ages and entice them with alcohol, nicotine, rebellion, and drugs. Oh, and they talk about in here. Um, I'm quoting some of it because it, it's you know I'm not all of it. So if I'm kind of taking out, you're like, okay, you just threw that in. I don't know where you're going with that. Grab me. I'll, I'll redirect. Okay. I'll elaborate a little more. <laughs> Liberal public schools disregard the need for God. Um, and um, at every turn, godly parents have to be vigilant to successfully contend with the godless world around us. Um, Amen. So um, they removed um, prayer from schools. They removed the Bible from schools. Um God's, God's way of doing things is, even if you're not a Christian, is there's benefit to it. Yeah, it's still beneficial. So if you want to be an atheist, but you want to live by, okay, I don't need to go around and kill people. I don't need to go around and, you know, sleep with everybody I meet uh, that I'm interested in. Uh, you know, God's standards, I, I, like, I was telling Jason about this when I was... Uh, Going, in, I think it was I was in nursing school. What you grinning for? Okay. That sounds like a good thing. I don't know. So, so I was talking about you know when when they start, first started you know we have not people have not always delivered babies. I'm a nurse, so you know that's where my mind's going. People have not always delivered babies at the hospital, and so when they first started delivering babies at the hospital, um, there was like a thirty percent survival rate. Okay, it was really, really bad. Well, what ended up happening was they realized that the doctors were not washing their hands between delivering babies. Then they realized, okay, we need to wash our hands. So then they started, the gloves wasn't invented at this time. Right. So then they uh, started washing their hands, but they would have a bowl of water. And then they would wash their hands in the bowl of water. Well, the Bible talks about, and I think it's in Leviticus, and it is one of God's laws to wash your hands under running water. 
Okay, so they started washing their hands under running water between each patient, and then the survival rate just skyrocketed from giving birth. So God's laws, the way ships are built, this is not where I went meant to go with Sunday school, but who cares? Um, ships, ships, when they build ships, the, the standards that they use to build ships are based on God's measurements. The ships are built, you know, when, when Noah was told, huh, the proportions, mm -hmm. the length and width and the, the depth of it and stuff, the ratio and stuff, that's how they, they build it because they have found, they've built them other ways, but they're capsize or, you know, they're, they, they just don't work as effectively as God, well, God's, God's instructions on how to Noah built the ark. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like... If you don't read it, you don't know it. So, I mean, and you don't have to be a Christian to, to read this stuff. And, and it's like, there, there's benefits to it. Mm -hmm. And so we are better off as a society learning God's, God's rules. You don't, I mean, like, I, I don't want to say you don't have to be a Christian, but and, and the, where I'm going with this is the school system. Taking the Bible out, you're taking a set of principles that is good advice and you're removing them plus you're removing God which um, that's the saddest part but yes it also extends to uh, colleges and universities because um, it's no different <coughs> there either because uh, they're even teaching them liberal communist and Marxist, Marxist doctrines yeah. Yeah. well if you want to go to that topic <laughs> I was uh, watching, and, um, you, and I think Jason told me it's been going on for a couple of years now, but I, I guess I have missed it or something. But uh, California, not to beat up California, <laughs> but the school system, um, what they're teaching, um, they're teaching uh, elementary school kids about, um, in kindergarten, they're teaching them that the only reason that they're a boy or a girl is because when they were born, their parents looked at them and decided mm -hmm. that's what they wanted yes. them to be yes. based on their genitalia. Yeah. So, so, I mean, so they're teaching them that. So they're teaching these little kids that are already slightly, you know, trying to figure out the world and how things work. They're teaching them now that the only reason you're a boy is because your mom and daddy said when you were born, they looked at you and said, oh, he's a boy. And so then now you start thinking, you know, these kids, I mean, like they're not raised, in, if they're not raised um, in, in a Christian home with, with good um, principles and, and doctrine, they're, they're going, and they're confused more so than they ever have been. And so now you used to have a, a large group that was confused. Now you have an enormous, uh, and, and it goes even further. In, in middle school, they're teaching them that it's okay to play around and experiment sexually with different people with yourself whatever and, and, and that's not what God's word says mm -hmm. and then you know then they then they're going to be overrun with STDs and stuff and then when um I think it's also in uh might be elementary school um that the kids can can decide you know what I want to be a, a boy and then you go to the the school nurse and they can put them on hormone replacements without the parents consent Hey, so the lockdowns have been great because it got the kids out of the darn school. Parents are getting you, you know what I'm so okay. Uh, lockdowns have been great. So what the enemy intended for evil, God right. turn it to good. So this, I'm going to introduce y'all to Brenda. We're going to put him in girls' sports so he can dominate. <laughs> <laughs> oh me, okay. Olympic superstar. Yeah, right. the, the enemy, all, all this, all this, you know, this going on. All this, yeah, because girls can have beards nowadays. Oh, I saw a thing one time. I saw a thing one time that says that um, uh, it's not not just girls have PMS. No, period. Periods, periods. Oh, not right. just girls have periods. I'm thinking, <laughs> well, if you're a male and you're, you know, just this. anyway, we're not going there. I already have, but whatever. Um, Yes. Well, I just wanted to say, Paige, that whenever Satan, you know, Satan's always there. He's always got things going on. But, you know, he's had concerted campaigns. Okay, so I'm thinking of, like, the Nazis, when the mm -hmm. Nazis came over. Who, who did Hitler go after? He went after what? The youth. Uh, okay, well, he went after, but specifically, he had those youth groups. Because he knows that when he can change the thinking, when Satan can change the thinking of the youth, then he's got the whole future 
of the people. He, um, now in the United States, that's what we got. I mean, we've got a transgender school reader now for the, what is it, kindergarten, preschool. They sit there, starts that confusion right there. They're teaching them about, they've taken God completely out, like you said. They're teaching them um, about all the, everybody is the same, you know, as far as the transgender and all that. Teaching them about communism, Marxism. That's what's destroying the country. One of the things is that the, these young people coming up, they don't even have any kind of loyalty to the country. They don't even say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore. That's right. um, so anyway, but that's what a core, core, common core math. Who understands that? That doesn't even make any sense. I, I love math, and yeah, you know, we homeschooled, yeah. so I, we went through algebra and that kind of stuff. And my cousin sent her son over here for, so I could help with some math that he was struggling with. And she showed, me, she told me what it was. I'm like, oh yeah, we do that all the time. He came over here and he had this formula that he had to do. Um, to it was Common Core, and I looked at it and was like, dude, I don't know how to help you. I'm like, hey, I, this is how I do it. He's like, I can't do it that way. I showed him the, the problem, you know, how to get the answer. He's like, I, if I don't do it this way, it's wrong. I was like, I, I can't figure that out. And I love it. So, but yeah. anyway, but the, you are absolutely on point when it comes to this. The, the, the other thing that they're, that they're indoctrinating through music, media, you name it, is rebellion and lack of respect for authority. Yes. And if you don't respect authority... We have anarchy. We have chaos. I mean, like, if they, they, you, you were taught, okay, so you take an elementary school uh, kid and you tell them that you're only a boy because your mom and dad say you're a boy. Right. Well, then, well, my mom and dad must be evil. Why would they make me be something that I don't feel like I want to be? Why did they do that to me? So now, now you start resenting your parents. Right. And so they get you into resenting your parents. They got gotcha. you. They, got, they can put whatever they want in you because you're not going to listen. You shut down and you won't listen to the older generation. I'm not saying the older generation is perfect. Right. Some of the biggest mistakes the, the country goes through is older generations set us up like this. You know, but there's the, so you have to have discernment. You have to allow the ones. This is the question you ask, listeners, as you're out there. And you're a teenager or, you know, if, whatever. Uh, older, younger adult older adult, whatever, uh, ask yourself, the people that are speaking in my life, do they have the desire to see me prosper and do better and, and, and have a happy, productive life, or do they want to see my destruction? Because if, if, their, if their goal, you know, uh, this was a comment I made the other day, is it, when we were talking about somebody and some issues that they were having, yeah, they're making a mistake. Yeah, they're messing up. But their whole, your whole life, their whole life, had they tried to, to encourage you to do better, to be a better person. And if, if they have done that, then why would all of a sudden they've been trying to start trying to tear you down? That's the world telling you that they're tearing you down. So just pray. Seek good God. That's why uh, the Bible says not to forsake the similarity of yourselves, especially as you see the day drawing closer. Why? Because when you come around in a, a group setting like this, you can, you can say something, and the, God can use what someone says to speak into your life. Um, as far as, you know, maybe, maybe you are rebellion, rebelling against authority, and someone says something, and you think, you know what? So you get home, you, you, in your quiet time with the Lord, you can realize, you know what? I, I, I see it. I see the other point of view. So anyway, um, some really uh, good stuff in this chapter. Um, I'm not going to hit on anything else. Um, get the book and read it. It's good. Uh, it talks about how you know if the enemy is coming against your children and the different signs and, and what you can do. Um, and we'll continue next week to talk some more about what you can do. Um, I'm going to close this in prayer. Um, does anybody have any questions real quick? Uh, the name of the book is Spiritual House Cleaning by Edie, um, Eddie huh? and Alice Smith. Keep lighting the call. I work, I work with Edie one time, so Eddie and Alice Smith. Okay, any questions? Okay, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for the, the generation that's coming up right now, Lord. We just ask that you put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Shield them. Give them discernment. Open their eyes. We come against the enemy's attempt to steal them, to corrupt their minds, to lead them astray. God, we ask that you just draw them. Don't give up on them. Keep drawing them and pulling them to you, Lord. Soften their heart. Have them prepared and ready so that when, when, they, when they step into you, your, your love and your 
world that you've got prepared for them, Lord, that they will be on fire and they will be mighty warriors for your kingdom, Lord, that they will bring many, many to know you because of their word, their testimony, and their actions and how they handle themselves. We pray this for the older generation, for us as well, Lord, that we continue to guide and encourage um, our children and our, our family members, our young family members in the direction of you, Lord. Let our example be one worthy to say that, that you, we serve you, Lord. Don't let us embarrass you. We just, we love you. We thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen.